Hello everyone, so in this video I'm going to show you how to do DEA analysis using R software and I will be using the package called benchmarking, okay? So if you have not installed the package, go to package and then click install and then write benchmarking and you will find it here and then install it. But I have already installed it, so I will just load the software, load the package, and then I will move forward. I'm also loading the side package here, which you do not need for benchmarking, but I will do some basic statistics for which I will need it, okay? For instance, here you see the describe command. This comes under the side package. So anyway, be, after you have loaded the packages, the first thing you want to do is you want to load your data. So you can click here if you have the if you have defined the exact path of your data file, then just click here and load the data. Otherwise, you can also load the data from here. Import data set, and then you have the options like Excel, SPSS, SAS, data, or you can also import from here. So for instance, I am going to load the Excel file. So when we have this one, then you have to just browse. And after you load the data, you have to make sure that the data file name is same as what I have in the code. So in the code, I have defined the data file as data. So I have to rename it and I call it now data and then I click import. Okay. So now I have loaded the data here. As you see, I have 38 observation and 14 variables. To look into the data, you can just click here, but I have it open. So I will just show you here. So it's the data of four terminals. Okay. And then I have inform I have data on birth number, birth length, uh, depth, terminal area, yard grandi, ship to shore grandi. Then I have container handle in 2009, container handle in 2010, and I also calculate the average of these two years. For this kind of frontier methods like DA, SFA, or free disposal hull, FD FDH, this kind of methods you will need inputs and outputs, right? So the inputs are normally the resources that are utilized to generate the output. So for instance, I'm talking about a port, port efficiency benchmarking study. So here like uh, inputs are birth number, birth length, depth, terminal area, you are going to these kind of things. These are the inputs and the output is these ones, TUs and average throughput, okay? So you will see I will use this as input and use this this information, TU, as I will, I will actually use this one, the last one, as the output to generate my uh, efficiency scores. So now let's go back to the R. So here now I can just go through some descriptive statistics of my variables, okay? And normally, you know, we present this descriptive statistics in a nice table in, a, in our research paper. And this paper again is under review at the moment. And as soon as it will be published, I will post the link of the study below in the video description. So have a look there. Uh, when we have our data, Sometimes, sometimes we want to see the some of the characteristics of our data. For instance, what, what is the class of the data? For instance, it's data frame, okay? And then what is the structure of the data? Maybe we want to see that as well, right? So we can see the data structure here. Data frame, 38 observations, foreign variables, how it looks like, some integers, some factors, some numericals, okay? So we can, we can see the structure of our data, right? But then, what we want to do in a front or a study or DA is that we want to define our input and output. Okay, so we define our input in X. Uh, we say, okay, X with data C bind this one, this variable, this variable, this variable, this variable. Okay, and yeah, this variable. So you can have as many as you want, but remember that the name of the variable should be exactly as it is in your data file, okay? Exactly as it is in your data file. The name should be exactly the same, okay? And then for output variable, which is why you also need to define it, okay? You can also have more than one output, but here I'm having only one, okay? And which is the average throughput. So now, you have to decide on whether you're going to use variable returns to scale or constant returns to scale, but I'm going to show you both of them, okay? So the, this first part here is variable returns to scale. 
we, we also call it BCC DA. So for DA BCC, you will just run this command BCC DA. You define your X uh, input and output returns to scale is variable returns to scale. Orientation is input oriented. Then you just run the command and you will have the scores. Then you run BCC to see the scores for the 38 uh, terminals DMUs and you see the efficiency scores here. You can check the normality of the of the efficiency score using the Shapiro Wilk test and it is not normally distributed. You can just use the EFF command to see the efficiency scores, right? But we could see it from here anyway. But then also if you want to have the efficiency score in a data frame structure, you can you can run this command data frame dot BCC EFF. Okay. You can see some summary of the efficiency scores. Sometimes it, it looks nice the ranges and how many within these ranges and what is the percentage, okay? So we see, for instance, within 80 to 90%, uh, we have the maximum 13, 13 terminals are in that range, okay? And there are about 14, which are equal to one, right? Nice, if you want to calculate some slack, you can also calculate the slack, and this is the command for that, okay? So you just run this and then you run uh, this one then you will see the slack information okay so like for instance here no slack no slack no slack so when there is slack you will see it true and in comparison with the other one how much is the slack you can see that and then if you want to plot your DA you can plot it using this command so this is how it looks like Okay, this is the frontal line and these are this is where your DM is false. And yeah, you can also see it without the line. Okay. So but normally we want to see it with the line, right? So that's what we want. And sometimes we want to calculate the bootstrap DEA. So this is the command to do bootstrap again DEA.boot very easy. X and Y, this is input and output, then number of bootstrap reputation, but that's here, you define it here. RTS is here, VRS, orientation is input oriented, and here you define the significance level, okay. Then you just run this command, sometimes it can take quite long, uh, based on how many reputations and how complex is your model, but let's see how long it takes. Yeah, it didn't take really very long. And then we just run it to see the bootstrap scores. So if we scroll up, we can see the bootstrap scores here, right? Yes. So here, this is the original efficiency. This is the bias character efficiency score. Then we have the bias here, and then we have the variance here, okay? And then here we also have the confidence intervals, okay? Awesome. So now, if you want, you can also calculate the super efficiency under this VRS, okay? So super VCC, SDA, this is the command, and then we run it, we see the super efficiency score, okay? And then we can see, print it nicely. So there are actually six peer groups. Sometimes you want to see the excess, and you can just click excess, and then you will see the excess values here. So how much you have more in each of the variables each in each of the inputs compared to the efficient front end DMU. Okay. And then what else? Uh, if you want to do constant return to scale, the commands are more or less same. You just change it to CRS and I name it as CCR, okay, to differentiate from the previous one. And then we run this, we run this, we get the scores, we can get the uh, p value, it's close, it is also not normally distributed. And then again, we can see it nicely we directly with the EFF command, and we can also plot it, as you can see. So yeah, that's how it looks like. And we can also calculate the super efficiency group for the CRS, okay? And here are the scores, and here we can see the peers as well, right? Awesome. Also, we can calculate the uh, excess input for CCR. So we will just run this and then we will get it here. So in comparison to the frontier, how much uh, how much extras we have, okay? Assuming constant return to scale. 
but this is not really uh, feasible this uh, because I, I don't think actually in, in my opinion uh, port efficiency or like more or less most of the production front tires are not really constant return to scale anyway most of them are variable returns to scale and then we can also look into free disposal hull again the command is very simple we just write FDH in the RTS and then everything is also the same and then here we call it FDH to differentiate from the CCR and BCC. So we can just click run, run, and again I'm running. I don't really need this code. Uh, that was another normal distribution test, but I will just go for Shapiro Wilk. Okay, and I see it's also not normally distributed. It is also less than 0 0.05. And then we can see the scores again here. We see many of the terminals are actually efficient in this frontier approach. And here we can also plot this one. And we can actually see that actually, yeah, many of them seems to be um, efficient in this approach. We can also calculate the super efficiency group for this. Okay. And we can also print the peers for this group, right? And also we can see the excess in this group. Okay, so here we see actually as many of most of the most of the as most of the DMUs are efficient anyway, we don't have much of excess input anyway. Okay, so that's it. Thank you for watching. You will find this code, this uh, R file, you will find this one in our research website. The link is below in the video description. So just click and download this. You can use it very easily just replacing the names of the variables. And you have to actually do it only once in the first here. So when you define it, just change it here because after that we have only X and Y. So it will be same for you. So just change the name to the variables here. Replace with input and output variable names. Okay. Thank you for watching.